A student is investigating the work required to pull a box containing some masses of a slope, sloping wooden board. Required to pull a box containing some masses of a sloping wooden board in figure 4.1. Where's the figure? Okay, here. Using a string pulling a box containing some load here. Plus, oh, to investigate how the work required to pull the box up the slope depends on the mass of the box and its contents. Think about this problem huh, for a few minutes. Mm, okay. I help later. Just type in any idea that you have. Just type in. Huh? In your plan, you should hear the suggestions. Follow these uh, suggestions. This is a difficult problem uh, in paper six. Independent variables includes the mass of the box. Mm. Independent and dependent. Pull a box containing some masses up the slope. We are investigating the dependence of the work on the mass. So the independent variable is the mass, correct? The dependent variable is the work. Yes. Explain briefly how you could carry out experiment investigation, including uh, the measurements you would take. The control variables includes the roughness of the wooden board. Uh, roughness here, you can say the yeah, the coefficient of friction, the roughness, the material. It is, I think, acceptable. Oh, okay. Yeah. The uh, force in the string. Yes, is a good idea to keep the force the same, definitely. Surface area of the box, okay. Surface area. Even though it is not a factor that affects the work, but it's okay to mention it. I think that the um, mask team will not mention this thing, surface area. But like, like the air resistance and Mm, okay. <laughs> if you pull it slowly, uh, the air resistance is negligible. Oh, really? Yeah. Because the movement is slow. Okay, I'll probably get rid of it then. I don't know what else then. It's too okay. Mm, the angle of the slope. Same angle. Keeping, the slope. Yeah, keeping the, the angle, the incline the same. The force is definitely the most important thing. Remaining the force the same, most important. And the mass, the mass will change it uh, by different trials. Mm, the material, the roughness, yeah. Yeah, okay, I think those things are enough. Okay. The next thing, you need to explain um, the procedure, the experiment, briefly. How do you measure the work yeah, you this uh, definition of work. Measure the force, huh? Measure the force and then the distance moved by the object. So how do you measure the force? What tool do you need to measure the force? Um, good question. It's called a force scale. There's a force. Or instead of force scale, you don't need a force scale. You can use some, some weight uh, like this. We say the incline huh, with the box, you uh, pull it. Here you need to put a pulley, you know the pulley? Oh yeah. Yeah, pulley here. And then um, you use some object uh, with the known weight, like 100 grams. You oh. can put this thing on the, the weight scale to know its weight, its mass, 100 gram. Huh? So the force, the weight of this thing, is uh, 100 times 9.8, wait, the, uh, convert that into kilogram, huh? 0.1 kilogram times 9.8. But in rea reality, actually, uh, we are given in the laboratory some known masses such as one newtons, one newtons, okay? One yeah. newton. I will show you uh, the picture of those things. Um, they are called the weight, what's it called? Weight. Ways set in physics lab. Yeah, yeah. So you can hang this thing. Each uh, each piece here is like uh, 20 gram, huh? 
or a point two newton. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, you can use a set like this thing, or a set like this thing with known weight, such as uh, this is like uh, five newton, this is three newton, two newton. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me find a picture that include the values of the weight. I do not see it. But anyway, um, they're like this one. OK, so mm -hmm. you know the weight of this object, meaning the force uh, used to pull the object up the slope. OK, oh, okay. so this is one of the things that you need for the experiment, trying to re decrease the size. OK, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's any other patterns you would use, any other patterns. So this is one thing you need, okay? According to the given diagram here, we are already provided the slope, like wooden slope, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, the string, the box, and the masses. So you would need uh, some other things, such as a pulley that can be attached to an edge uh, to the top of the, of the slope, huh? And then this way set to um, to control the force, maintaining it the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you need to mention those two things: pulley and way set. Pulley. In the in the list here, other parameters: pulley and uh, weight set. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Um, pulley. Explain briefly how you carry out investigation. And the next thing, how do you measure the distance that the object move? Because to calculate the force, the walk, you need the force and the distance. So how do you okay. measure the distance? Um, the length of the wooden board. Yeah, you need a ruler oh, yeah. uh, that you can put along the box and then mark the point, like starting to pull it from from here, from the, the bottom. Huh? Yeah. You need a ruler, straight ruler, like one meter. Huh? And then mm -hmm. you can mark here a zero point, use some tabs, something that you can mark huh? uh, 20 centimeter, okay, meaning 0 0.2, 0 0.2 meter and then 0.4 meter, 0.6 meter, and so on, okay? Put some mark on it so that you can um, see, you can calculate, or, or you just uh, don't need that many, many marks. You just need to point a uh, certain mark, such as 0.8 meter here, okay? And put something to stop the box from being pulled up to here not over this one, this um, point, OK? Yeah. So that the distance that you pull the box is always constant, 0.8 meter, OK? Mm -hmm. So the work is a force multiplied with the distance. Um, and the force here depends on the, the weight of this box. Mm -hmm. yeah. The heavier the box you need to add more object to pull it down, uh, pull it up huh? mm. through a um, pulley. OK. Yeah. So you can maintain this distance D the same uh, per a meter, for example. OK. So measure the distance. Yeah, that the object is pulled on the slope and that distance can be a constant okay. by marking a point uh, that the uh, box is pulled up to huh? okay. looking for the answer this is a t difficult question yeah. according to the mass scheme to measure the force you need a force scale force meter you know it? Do you know uh, that thing's for scale? Normally in the school lab, uh, you would use this oh, yeah. for scale. Okay. Yeah. 
but using this thing is a little bit difficult for this kind of experiment because it's hard uh, for your hand to control to make the force the same. That's the reason why I suggest using the way set here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That is another thing here. The force scale. The method is outlined by the two main idea like this. Pull the box up to the up, up the slope and measure the force and the distance moved. But they didn't say specifically how they move they measure the distance, huh? Okay. Because it is a brief describe description, huh? Okay, explain briefly. Measure the distance and the force. Measure distance when the object is pulled uh, by a ruler or some marks position on the board, huh? On the yeah. slope. The next okay. one, state the key variable variables that you would control. You already did that, huh? Good. Uh, checking with other control variables here. The angle, okay? The angle or the height, they're actually the same thing. Yeah. Because the, hard, the angle depends on the height, huh? The distance move, okay, distance move, as I mentioned, you should choose a constant distance moved by the slope in different trials, such as 0.8 meters, okay? Mm -hmm. 0.8 meter. Make that distance the same. Control oh. it. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. can add one more thing to control uh, for the control variable. That is the distance moved, a distance pull, that the object is pulled. Distance pulled by the yeah, object. Yeah. Distance that the object is pulled should be the same. To simplify the experiment, huh? It can be like 50 centimeter. Uh, draw a suitable table with column headings to show what display you're reading. Okay, please try doing that. A table, how many columns do you need and what are the names of the headings? You can draw a table with the shape tool. Oh, can you yeah. hear me? Uh, I can hear you now. Okay, yeah. sorry. Fine. I'm fine. Okay. How many columns do you need? Uh, three or four. Mm -hmm. And what are the names of the headings? Uh, the this and uh, the, the what is it called again? The mass and mm -hmm. the work done. Mm -hmm. And more? Uh, mm. what, what else? The, the final way. Do you need a third column? Final mm. way? No. Uh, the third column could be the distance, but because we fix the distance to be the same, so we do not need the third column, huh? Just the yeah. two column. Just two column. Okay. Please type in mass here and uh, what's it, the, net, the, the mass of the things, the weight in the box, huh? And secondly, the force, the force on the second column. Isn't the force the same though? Mm, no, the force will be different depending on the mass inside the box that you pull up. Okay. Because the heavier the, the, the mass that you put in inside the box, the greater the force that you need to provide to pull the box. Oh, okay, okay. okay. And the force that you use to pull the box must be at least equal to, wait, wait. You haven't learned that thing, huh? Force resolution. Uh, do you remember this thing? Like if you have a, a block, an object on a slope, this is the weight, the weight of this object, okay? The weight meaning the gravity, gravitational force, mg, the weight w, okay? You yeah. can resolve Resolve this weight in two components. One component between the color, one component like this, and another component like this. Have you learned this thing in school? Which one? Oh, like. Resolving a force? Yeah, resulting force. Yeah, resolving force. So this is one component, W1, and the uh, like this component, W2. Okay, W2 here. It's the weight of you. Okay, so the force you need to use 
to pull this block upward must be at least equal to this component W2 pulling force, huh? FP pulling force must be at least equal to W2. If the friction is negligible, it's equal to W2. But there is always friction, and therefore you need to use a greater force to overcome W2 and the friction. Mm -hmm. okay. So those are the two columns, the mass and the force. Mm. Draw a simple table with column heading to show how you would explain the ring. Okay, the mass it can, with the unit can be in grams or kilogram, oh. huh? And the force in Newton. Answer mm. here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, two column. Two not column, but rows, huh? Two rows. Oh. Okay. And but it's definitely fine with a column. Yes. Explain how you would use the result to reach a conclusion. How do you verify if the force is proportional to the mass? Um, it has to be in a straight line. Yes, you can plot a graph. Uh, yeah, say, say that. Plot a graph of the force on a vertical axis and the uh, mass on a horizontal axis. Force of the work and the work. If you say the work, not the force, sorry, because we're investigating relationship between the work and the uh, mass, huh? and the data should distribute so that we can draw a bit this line, which uh, almost passes through the origin. Okay, on the graph of the yeah work. of the the work. Oh, of the work. work. Yeah, this is the work. Okay, and um, this is the mass. And mass, and um, see if the graph is straight. Mm. What is the more professional word than the than C? <laughs> uh, examine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Really? Okay. Examine if the and crosses through the origin. Mm -hmm. Of course, you need to calculate the work huh? because this um, is the mass column. Sorry, the, the force column. From the force, you need to multiply it with the distance to get the work. Huh? Calculate the work first before plotting the graph. Oh. Okay. okay. Calculate the, the, the work. Oh, yeah. Um, you got the force multiplied with the distance before plotting the graph. Huh? Yes, okay. 